wearing something different than what I was wearing in the intro. I cannot tell you how many times I've tried to film a video, to film this video. Motherhood has been a roller coaster with two kids. If you guys have more than two, bless your heart. Even if you have one, one was hard, but two was a different dynamic for me and it's been harder for two versus one. So I hope I can finish filming this video because we're doing a Q and A and I asked you guys on Instagram if you guys had any questions and you guys came through with the questions. So I have my iced coffee, same, same cup. I did this purposely, same cup. This time though, I think it's a white chocolate mocha. I just used the Hollander sauce. Ice Leggero, Dead Virtuo, that's what we're drinking. So let me get the questions because I don't know where my phone is at. One second. Do you guys like my case? I got the Wally case. I had an old one and this one is just new, new design and I love it. First question, actually he says it's not a question, but I'll miss your Virtuo line capsule reviews. And that's what I wanted to start with. On Instagram, if you don't follow me, I shared that this month I'm going to be done with Virtuo line. And so my sister's actually moving out of our house this weekend and she's taking the machines with her. She already took one. She gave it to a friend through the Virtual Pop. And so when she's gone, she's taking the Virtual Plus, which is the one on <laughs> we a weird time, this one right here, which is why I wanted to do a nice Leggero because it's going to be the last, probably one of the last ones that I brew. So with that being said, I am pretty much done with virtual line taste testing and pretty much showing you guys any future videos that have to do with virtual line. I won't have them anymore. So any new pods that come out, I won't be able to review them because I won't have the machine. I just feel like I haven't been craving a lot of coffee, like large amounts of coffee. I think I've said it before. I love my lattes, cappuccinos even, just something small, like a nice small amount of coffee. It's very rare that I am craving a big cup of coffee. And with that, I haven't really bought a lot of big mugs. I think the most I'll buy at this point is like a 14 ounce mug because of that. So I am slowly moving away from the virtual line. And so my sister is gonna help with that by just pretty much yanking it off of me and taking it with her. She enjoys those big cups of coffee. And so I think it'll be a better fit for her. I am keeping the mini, not the mini, what is it? The cities, which is original line for Nespresso. So I will continue to do here and there some taste tests if I decide to, but for two line, is no more what type of oat milk do you recommend so i love chobani zero sugar oat milk so that is my ride or die guys that's what is in this cup right now and it never disappoints obviously we're human we get bored of the same things so i have been experimenting with other oat milks and there is one that i just recently they the brand actually sent it to me one second this is their chocolate one and then this is their barista line i haven't tried these two but i did just finish which i think i have the carton here i did just finish this one so this is their original unsweetened which i love a lot of oat milks have a lot of sugar that's why i like this chobani zero sugar because it's creamy it's still nice and sweet but it's zero sugar so i add my own syrups same deal except this one if you are into more of like clean, clean ingredients i think you would love this one literally the ingredients right here so you guys can read them yourselves none of that gelin gelin gum none of that chobani has that stuff which i don't care maybe i should care but all of these ingredients are clean and they use the whole entire oat which means that it's creamier according to them and i think it is it froths really well um it's nice and sweet it only has a gram of sugar but it's still nice and sweet and a little bit of vanilla it's really good it's a good milk can't wait to try these this is their barista one so i'm assuming it's a little bit better for for latte art and the ingredients are slightly different but still seem good to me and then um, this one is their chocolate flavored one, which I haven't tried. I keep forgetting to do like some sort of drink with these, but I will keep you posted. Either way, I'll link this one. I think it's sold on Amazon, and if not, I'll leave their website so you guys can check them out. This is not sponsored. They did send these to me, but they don't know 
they probably won't even ever see this video um, because they don't know that I'm talking about them. Have you tried the Juicy Watermelon Pot? I did try it, I bought it, and it's actually probably one of the worst pods that I've ever tried next to the Whiskey Essence, which I tried. That one's a little bit more, like it makes more sense to me, more bearable. The watermelon one did not. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I made a reel on Instagram and I was truly surprised to see how many people actually made it work and loved it. Good for you guys because I just didn't understand the flavor combination and I couldn't get on it. I tried it different ways. So if you go to that reel, I'll link it. I'll link the reel in the description box. I loved that so many people shared the way that they like it. So I did try a couple. I tried it with a dash of oat milk. I think the first time I put a lot of oat milk, but I just, I don't like it. I didn't like it. If you feel like you're similar in taste to me, you might not like it. But again, I was really blown away by how many people actually did enjoy that pot. That pot. Can you review your Breville coffee grinder? Can you grind a lot of beans for drip coffee? So if you guys see behind me, the Breville grinder is gone. And only because Ascaso, I don't know if you guys have heard of that brand. I'm sure you guys have. Espresso Parts sells Ascaso and they gifted me that grinder. They're on Instagram. Let me review the Breville grinder first and then we'll go back to what's that situation back there. The Breville grinder is awesome. Okay, I was never intending to get rid of it, that grinder. If you are just wanting some good ex some good espresso at home, you wanna grind, pour over, Chemex, all that stuff, French press, um, and at the same time still wanting to grind for espresso, then that is literally all you need. I think it's like $200. The only thing, I guess, as far as cons is that sometimes there's some inconsistency in the grind. I would notice when I would disconnect my grinder, if I had it, let's say at a grind level 10, and then I would connect it again, it would go to like a, it would say eight, but I'm like, how would the burrs inside move so that now it's reading at an eight? There's just some inconsistencies like that. Just a little minor dial in, quick little dial in. After that, it was good to go. And I would never really disconnect it. I think I would disconnect it with like moving from like Rockford to here, or when I was kind of switching them from here to over here, stuff like that. But other than that, it would stay, for the most part, I would say 90% consistent with the grind. And then there is some inconsistency with like, I noticed when I would dial in a certain bean and it was, for example, a 10, and then I would go for a pour over grind, which was like a 40. When I would go back to the 10 using the exact same bean, I would have to almost redial in because it wasn't the same. I hope that makes sense. But these were just minor inconveniences for the price. I think the grinder is good and the fact that you can grind large amounts also good do you feel an espresso was a good starting point stepping stone to get to a manual espresso i like this question because okay i would say yes it's, it was a nice stepping stone only because i had no idea what manual espresso was i didn't even register anything about the coffee manual espresso world and you guys know and have seen it because of me so if you guys are on the fence of whether just to go for an espresso first and then the manual i would just jump right into the manual but to me it was a stepping stone because had it not been for an espresso i would probably never like looked into the manual side of espresso so it is a stepping stone in that sense but for you guys that already are kind of open to that manual world because you watch my videos um, I would definitely just jump into manual. You won't regret it. It is so delicious, guys. Nothing compared to an espresso. So if you want rich espresso, definitely just skip the, skip the Nespresso and jump into manual. You will never look back. The next question, have you tried Jordan's skinny syrups? If so, do you like them? I have tried a couple flavors. I think the only one that I um, ended up liking was the peppermint bark. I just don't like the aftertaste. So if you guys want a zero sugar syrup that has absolutely no aftertaste and it is so delicious, it really depends on the flavor, but Monin, zero sugar, French vanilla, guys, oh my God, it is so good. It has no aftertaste. That one and the raspberry, but the raspberry, like obviously I don't use that flavor a lot. I use 
French vanilla the most and I'm so glad I like it. I'll link it in the description box for you guys. Trust me. Um, as far as skinny syrups, I feel like a lot of them have aftertaste. If there is one that you feel like does not have aftertaste, leave it in the comment section below for us because we would love to know like other options. I've tried the, the sugar cookie one. I've tried, um, I think their hazelnut one. It just, the aftertaste wasn't there. So let us know if you guys have any recommendations as far as Jordan's. Leave them in the comments. How's Weight Watchers going? Likes and dislikes. Guys, I've been kind of like on and off with Weight Watchers. I have a six month plan. The first two months, I lost 10 pounds, which was amazing. So amazing that I feel like in my mind, like that's enough, 10 pounds. I'm back to just eating whatever. But the thing that I like with Weight Watchers, it's easy to follow and it's very eye-opening. What foods? Okay, I used to eat a Big Mac almost every day probably three to four times a week because i'm nursing i'm i think it's like 40 points that i am able to use a day a big mac is 40 points or 41 points i was like oh my god i was eating my entire points in just that one sitting plus still eating breakfast dinner snacks it was insane so that was for me the eye-opening thing i've had one big mac since starting and it's been i think three months already and I don't crave it. I think it, I had that Big Mac when I was at a breaking point in my mental, it was like a really bad mental day, but right now like I'm talking about it and I don't crave it. Like it would be to the point where I would see it on TV and I'm like, oh my God, I need one, I need one. When you track daily, I think that's why I'm not really like on my phone looking at the points because when you track daily, you start to register like, okay, these are a certain amount of points. Okay, I can do this and do that. and. I like it. I feel like right now, um, I think I gained one pound because I haven't really been on track. And I did buy a bike that I haven't been working out on. But when I was cycling and then just kind of being lenient with the points, I still kept kind of like maintaining the weight. So I think right now I'm going to start back on it and start my cycling thing because I do like the cycling thing. It's just life has been a little hectic right now, but you know what? No excuses. We need to get back on it. I like it. You, wait, so the next question is not a question, but she's just saying waiting for the new original line pads review. And I do have them guys. They're in my cabinet down here. I just haven't had the time to review them. And I feel like I sound like a broken record. Mom life has just been, it's been crazy. I've tried filming this video at least six times. And hopefully today is the winner because these kids don't sleep. But I do have the pods. I am going to review them. I have that intention. They're coming. Um, what virtual pods match up similar to original line pods? So if you have Altizio, that's going to be like Arpeggio. If you have Orafio, that's going to be like Genova Livanto in original line. Scuro is similar to Double Espresso Chiaro. Fredo Intenso will be similar to Ice Forte. Ferro Delicado, Ice Legero. Those are some of the ones that are similar. And obviously the reason why you end up with two machines is because sometimes they don't make the exact pot. So like right now, Virtual Line came out with El Salvador. There's no El Salvador in original line, just Virtual Line. So those are the ins and outs of like having both lines. But there are some similar pods and those are some of them. Coffee break. Okay. Nespresso machine I recommend. I have a video. I'm not going to get into it here. I'm going to link the video for you guys. It's called what Nespresso machine should I buy? It's not about the machine. It's about your preferences as far as coffee and the drinks that you like. So make sure to watch that video. I'll put this is how the thumbnail looks and then I'll link it down in the description box. Have you think about making content in Spanish? I have thought about it and it's no. <laughs> I, I speak Spanish but the terminology and coffee world, I have no idea of any Spanish. Like, I don't even know what I would call the portafilter or oat milk, like avena, is that what it is? I don't know. Like, there's a lot of words that I feel like if I were to make a Spanish video, it would just take me ages and it's just not something that I wanna get into. There has been some of you guys, like for example, on Instagram, if you guys will DM me in Spanish, I will respond to you in Spanish. Um, and if you comment in Spanish, I will comment to you in Spanish. I can't translate the whole video in a comment in Spanish, but if you guys have a question, I could answer it in Spanish. 
Are you a fan of Keurigs? This was a fun question because it made me remember the time that I had a Keurig and I was like, I loved my Keurig and it took forever to get rid of it only because my husband was obsessed with it. It took him forever to get the hang of Nespresso. And then now he won't even touch Nespresso. All he wants is the Bambino. But we did have a Keurig and if you go back into my old videos i think where i used to have like mom videos with lucas you could kind of see the keurig in the background next to my mini essenza best coffee and espresso machine for starters i don't know if for starters you mean like an espresso machine again if that's what you mean then i would watch the video that i was talking about but if you're talking about manual espresso i would definitely just recommend the bambino I know a lot of the influencers have the Breville bigger machines, the Breville Touch, the Breville Express, the Pro. You guys, you don't need it. You do need a separate grinder with the Bambino, but all you need is a machine that will brew a solid espresso and the Bambino will give it to you. And then you can use that espresso to make any other drinks like a latte, macchiatos, cappuccinos. That's my, my unpopular opinion. All you need is the Bambino to get started and you're golden. From Virtual Pop and Virtual Plus, which one do you recommend? So they will both brew pretty much all Virtual Pods. The only difference between the Pop and the Plus is that the Pop will do those Alto Pods and the, I think they just came out with their cold brew ones. Um, the Virtual Plus won't do that. So if you wanna keep up to date with like the new big pods that Nespresso comes out with, I would go with a pop. But me personally, like I, I've said at the beginning, I never liked those big alto pods. So I will still ride or die Virtual Plus, especially because the open and close function is just easier, automatic. And with the Virtual Pop, you would have to close it, break your wrist and all that stuff. So I, I would say Virtual Plus. When will we get a sit down with you and Sergio in a Q&A. If you guys are interested in a Q&A with me and my husband Sergio, give this video a like and comment in the comment section letting me know because I can definitely make that happen. Has Nespresso reached out yet to do a sponsorship? Because they should. Nespresso gifted me the Virtual Pop, which was nice. So I finally got in contact with one of their marketing representatives and, and that's nice. I was blown away when they contacted me and honestly it was just for me to do a review on the machine on their site. They never asked me to review it on my YouTube channel. They never asked me to review or make a reel on Instagram. That was just me and I did that for free because I know that it benefited my audience. Nespresso regardless is a company that is very picky with their the people that they work with so just having them offer me the machine in exchange for a written review on their website was i mean i can't ask for more at this point <laughs> but yeah it was amazing as far as sponsors paid sponsorships i haven't had one with them and i think right now with me getting rid of the virtual is going to be even harder let me move this um but we'll see maybe they'll see that i still have the original line i'm willing to take a sponsorship we'll see have you always lived in Chicago? Where did you grow up? I have always lived in Chicago. I grew up in Little Village, which was a, I think about 15, 20 minutes away from downtown Chicago. And yeah, my mom still lives in Little Village. She won't ever leave. And when I visit her, I just get all the nostalgic feels going through the streets because that's where I grew up. How did your coffee journey start? My coffee journey started because of motherhood. It sounds bad because I used to drink coffee like regularly. After Lucas was born, I feel like I was so sleep deprived and I know you can get energy from other sources, but coffee was just something that would work for my energy and the, the whole like process of actually making my coffee was kind of like zen and cozy to me and I think I would look forward to it. I think several times in my mommy videos or vlogs, I would get my coffee and I had a few of you guys that would mention like, let me see your coffee bar, I wanna see your coffee bar. And then I did a coffee bar, coffee bar video, that one took off and that's pretty much what started the videos after that. And if you go back into my YouTube, into that one coffee bar video, after that it's a lot of coffee videos and I that's how, that's how it happened. Top three flavor syrups. So if you guys see back here, I have my, hold on. These tend to be my top 
three like anything that's in here they're always my top three at the moment so at the moment obviously salted caramel this is from monin monin french vanilla and then 1883 brownie haters will say it's not good but guys it's good you guys have to try it so those are my top three right now i also like the 1883 roasted hazelnut that one is really good but these are my top three right now have you done a review on the new starbucks reserve drink that can be made with it that one was really good i think i have a few of them left i did a reel so i'll have to um link it on the, in the description box for you guys i liked it it's a pretty solid pod it's supposed to be like fruity but honestly you could pair it with whatever i've tried it with i think it was brown sugar and it was really really good and if it tastes good with brown sugar it'll taste good with salted caramel it'll probably taste good with french vanilla i did try it with french vanilla and it was really good so it's a pretty good pot don't be afraid of those fruity notes sometimes those notes go away once you add milk but it was a very smooth pot it was really good i would definitely recommend it and maybe buy two sleeves because it is really good how do you do your eyebrows my eyebrows right now <laughs> um oh yeah i did them a little bit i don't like to like really fill them in so you you'll still see like some sparseness just to make it look like it's real you know but um, keeping it real, they are microbladed. Before I had Lucas, I got them microbladed and I have been needing a color boost is what they call it. Every so often I fill them in. And if I don't fill them in, they still look okay. But the corners, like where they start, that's I feel like where I really need to get them um, boosted, I guess. I use the L'Oreal Brow Stylist eyebrow thing, pencil, and the color Brunette and i just light strokes and kind of just fill in some sparse areas but again i don't go ham because like you'll still see like right there but i feel like any sparseness makes it look like it's less drawn if that makes sense but that pencil is my it has to be that pencil i feel like i've used other pencils and it's just that pencil and then i just kind of comb it in okay so this is probably the last question are you planning on purchasing any coffee machines this year what are your plans i didn't really i didn't realize somebody asked this the reason why i ended up with this castle they gave it to me obviously gifted by espresso parts but the reason why i was in talks with them was because because i was asking them about the escaso steel duo i'll put a picture right here guys it's a beautiful gorgeous machine it is all steel and so is that grinder that's that grinder there's nothing plastic about it other than the hopper, the entire body is steel. It is heavy. I've seen this machine for a good year. I finally bit the bullet. It's on pre-order. So it gets here June 30th or it ships June 30th. So pretty much in July, at the beginning of July, I'll, I'll have it. And so it's ordered. I'm just waiting for it. I'm excited. My husband knows how to use the Bambino. So I think he's going to keep the bambino um and the grinder for what depending on like whatever job site he's at he's always in different like areas so he's probably gonna take that at first he said maybe maybe he'll do the nespresso but now that my sister's taking the virtuos um i think he's gonna take a crack at just doing that i'll just dial in the beans for him and then he'll he'll take it the only thing i'm nervous about that machine is that i'm gonna have to learn finally how to froth my milk because up until now, I've always frothed the milk with the Bambino's automatic function. So I literally just leave that there and it'll do it for me. And then it just creates the perfect texture for latte art. But now I'm going to have to learn how to do it. And I know it's possible because my friend Jackie has been really good at latte art and she uses the same milk as I do. So it's possible. But yeah, the Escaso espresso machine i am so excited and it's white they have white just like a stainless steel and black so if you guys are kind of in the market and with that being said i have to buy a whole new like portafilter head um because it's a bigger size it's a 58 millimeter portafilter that require that's required but the machine actually comes with one that's double spouted which i'm excited about because right now i've only used the naked ones and i like the look of the spouted so I like that it's coming with one, but I already ordered a naked one from Passato. And then I have to order like pretty much every, the tools I, I have to order them. But that will come along later on. I forgot to mention with Virtual Line being gone, I would hope that you guys stay. 
for the content that's coming. I do want to do or concentrate more on recipes for coffee. Um, whether you have an espresso machine or a manual machine, you can still follow along with those recipes. Just other fun videos such as like alternative oat milk, syrups, coffee bar stuff, daily vlogs I plan to do a lot more. So it's, I'm just, I want to be more than just Nespresso. And like I said, even though you follow me, I'm guessing a lot for Virtual Line. There's a lot of fun things to come. So I hope you guys stay and continue on with me uh, for what's to come. But yeah, we'll leave it right here. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.